kesehatan. Okay, good. Uh, again, good morning everyone. So now let's move on with our uh, lesson four, topic four, water supply and management. But before that, let me ask, how are you feeling today? I hope everyone is uh, in good shape or uh, in a good mental state. Okay, so type in the comment section below uh, if you are feeling one of these emotions. So please comment number one for this emotion. Number two for this. And if you are uh, feeling cloudy, your head feels cloudy, so you may type number two. This for number three. This one for number four, this one for number five, this one for number six, for number seven. Okay, so we are approaching to the what we call uh, quote unquote hell week. Okay, so we are approaching um, um, final term examinations. Uh, on the first week of December. So, and I know there's a lot of things that you need to do as a student. So maybe this is you, okay, with this emotion. And for this one, please type number eight. So please uh, be aware of what you are feeling right now and just take a deep breath in and out for whatever that you are feeling so that uh, you can have an ease okay, uh, with your mind, with your heart, with your body so that uh, what we will be discussing today will be absorbed and will be internalized uh, by you. Okay, so... Let's move on. So since our topic is water management, so let's first let us first talk about uh, our main topic or our main agenda this morning is water. Okay, water is chemically known as H two O. Bakit? Because we water is combined by the two atoms. Okay, these two is for this two hydrogen two atoms of hydrogen or two uh, hydrogen atoms joined to a single atom of oxygen. That's why its chemical symbol is, is H2O. Agricultural water is used to grow, fresh produce, and sustain livestock. Agricultural water is used for irrigation, fertilizer, and pesticide application, and many others. According to United States Geological Survey, water used for irrigation accounts for nearly 65% of the world's freshwater withdrawals. When agricultural water is used effectively and safely, production and crop yield are positively affected. Management strategies are the most important way to improve agricultural water use and maintain optimal production and yield. So water is very important in the field of agriculture because okay, we have the saying that water is life. So for us humans, we need water in order for us to survive. The animals that we, we are tend to care of need water search to survive and most especially the plants they need water so all living organisms here on earth competes for a limited fresh water amount so though we are 75 percent covered with water the earth but it is mostly salt water the fresh water are very limited so that's why it needs to be used effectively and efficiently in order for us to sustain it and the next generation has uh, still can have uh, water to use okay, in producing food and in maintaining life here on earth. 
Water is a critical input for agricultural production and plays an important role in food security. Irrigated agriculture represents 20% of the total cultivated land and contributes 40% of the total food produced worldwide. Uh, irrigated agriculture is, on average, at least twice as productive per unit of land as rain-fed agriculture, thereby allowing for more production intensification and crop diversification. So as I have mentioned a while ago, the importance of water in agricultural production. So the type of agriculture that we have is irrigated agriculture and drain-fed agriculture. So for the irrigated ones, uh, it accounts, okay, the irrigated agriculture represents 20% of the total cultivated land and it contributes okay that cultivated land it contributes 30 percent of the total pr produce worldwide so imagine the huge percentage of irrigated land uh, are needed to be supplied with water plus the consumption of uh, humans in our daily living in our daily lives for water and other industries that needs fresh water also so where does agricultural water comes from so agricultural water comes from a variety of sources but here are the typical surfe uh, typical sources or pinagmumulan ng ating agricultural water. First is the surface water. So when we say surface water, we are talking about the rivers. So because the water is on the surface, streams, irrigation ditches, open canals, impounded water such as ponds, reservoir, and lakes. So these are... Uh, one of the source of our irrigation water. So, di ba, in our fields, uh, in yung mga bukid, okay, ano ba yung mga source ng patubig, okay, kapag nanggaling sa ilog, nanggaling sa lawa, nanggaling sa mga pan, sa mga reservoir, sa dam, okay, the, the source of that water comes from surface water. Next, if the water comes from uh, uh, you have your water pump in your farm, then the water comes under the ground or the groundwater. And another type is the rainwater or the precipitation that comes from the atmosphere. It is a form of fresh water that can, that, that is able, okay, that can be used by plants in order to maintain its life processes. So as you can see here, this is our land mass. Okay, so we have trees, we have crops. Imagine this is your farm. And then you have there the, the, the pond or uh, river. So river is a surface water. But if we will gonna be, if we will gonna be uh, uh, having water pump, so water pump, for example, here, okay, it pumps the water from the ground, tapos lalabas siyang uh, water source sa ating, para sa ating mga crops. Okay, next. Ayan. So, what is the importance now that we know the sources and the uh, agricultural water uh, scenario? Okay, worldwide. So now let's talk about the importance of water to plants. So water is necessary for photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? So photosynthesis is the process <clears throat> wherein the plants okay, get energy from the sunlight in order to uh, manufacture food through uh, using carbon dioxide and water and in return they will produce carbohydrates in the form of glucose and oxygen that we breathe. Okay.
Okay? So, actually, the water there, okay, the water is the water is the source of the oxygen that the plants are producing. So, water is important. So, di ba kanina, water is H2O, okay? The, the hydrogen is being utilized by the plants and then the oxygen is being diffused to the leaves of the plants through stomata in the form of oxygen or the air that we breathe. If there is no oxygen, then we cannot breathe. If there's no water, then there's no oxygen. So during this process, the plants use carbon dioxide from the air and hydrogen from the water absorbed through their roots and release oxygen as a byproduct. And that is because of the water. So this exchange occurs through the pore-like stomata of the leaves. So this is one of the importance of water to plants. Another is that we have uh, various functions in the plant body that needs water. Example, we have maintaining the cell turgidity for growth and structure. Look around you right now and you will see that plants, okay, makikita nyo yung mga halaman no, sa paligid, they can stand on their own even though they do not have bones like humans and animals do because of their cell turgidity. Okay. Uh, turgid yung kanilang cell, meaning there's a moisture in there that enables them to, to, to grow and stand on their own without um, a massive uh, skeletal structure. Next, transporting nutrients and organic compounds throughout the plant. So what do the roots, okay, what is the, the, the role of water is to Sometimes the nutrients are being being absorbed, okay, through uh, with water, okay. Water is absorbed with uh, nutrients there, okay, and it is transported to the different parts of the plant. So that's why water is very important. Next is comprising much of the living protoplasm in the cell. So much of the the weight. Or the structure in the cell is water. That's why um, uh, most of the, the plant cell is composed of water, especially the, the cytoplasm or the cytosol of the cell where the organelles are being embedded. So it is composed of water. That's made the, the cell of the, it's related to bullet number one. Uh, it's the reason why the cell are turgid. Next, serving as raw material for various chemical processes, including photosynthesis. So water is a raw material of plants to produce oxygen during the process of photosynthesis. Next, through transpiration, buffering the plant against wide temperature fluctuations. So, kung mapapansin nyo, di ba, when there is no water, the plants tend to uh, wilt. Okay? It is because, uh, first, walang, walang water sa cells niya, hindi siya magiging turgid, wilt siya. And also, um, the... The transpiration process inside the plant body needs water because water is being absorbed by the roots and being transpired through water vapor. That it is a continuous process and it is sometimes called the necessary evil. The, what the plants need to lose water in their body in return to absorb another to absorb water nutri and nutrients from the soil. So for better understanding of this scenario i have here some of the pictures that is uh, that represents okay, some of the the importance of water in the plant body as you can see here this is what we call a turgid cell meaning the cytosol or the cytoplasm or the protoplasm of the cell are uh, have water 
okay? Then this is the result of the placid cell where water is lost from the cell or there is no water inside the cell. So in, uh, when you see in the microscope, this is the cell when the, the plants are wilted. Next, the photosynthesis overview. The water and minerals from the soil are being absorbed by the plants, okay? And with the help of sunlight, the carbon dioxide and the water are being utilized by the plant in order to produce oxygen that we breathe and the glucose sugar, which is very essential on uh, human life, okay? Next is the, this is the absorption of minerals, okay? The water, sometimes, oh, it carries it carries nutrients and minerals to be absorbed by the root. So if there's no water, how can the, the minerals in the soil are uh, being mobilized? Next is the transpiration. As you can see here, the, these small dots are water in the soil that being absorbed by the plants in the process of transpiration. Okay, so this is very important. Okay, um, so let's review some uh, terminologies that we have discussed in lesson uh, lesson three or lesson one factors affecting crop production lesson one topic three factors affecting crop production so we have uh, tackled their available water water at field capacity water at saturation water at permanent tilting point hygroscopic water and gravitational water i hope you still remember these terminologies because this is very essential so when we say um, saturation capacity or water at saturation point, meaning that the soil holds too much of water. Dito na nagkaroon ng flooding, okay? Flooding, ibig sabihin yung soil, kapag hindi niya nakayang i-hold um, water, then it will uh, be loosely held, okay? By the soil, the water is loosely held. And yun yung ano, yun yung sobra, sobrang water. So, water at field capacity naman, it's the amount of water that can be hold, okay, by the, the soil with enough uh, pore spaces being maintained in the soil, okay. The difference between the field capacity or yung kayang hawakan na tubig ng lupa at ng saturation point o kung saan uh, marami ng hold na water yung lupa, okay, ay na water o tama na water yung lupa that is called gravitational water okay gravitational water is uh, flowing okay they can uh, flow because uh, excess na kaya di ba minsan yung mga ano pag umulan no o kaya pag nagbuhos tayo ng tubig sa lupa sa unang buhos natin walang sobra pero na absorb siya ng lupa kasi uh, wala pa siya sa, sa field capacity na absorb niya pa. Okay? Pero pag dumating yung time na medyo matagal na yung pagbuhos natin ng lupa, no? napapansin natin sa lupa, ano na, may nakikita na tayong water sa ibabaw, nagiging muddy na siya. Tapos medyo magmumove na yung water na sobra. Yun, yun yung saturation. At yung difference nga ng field capacity na yun at saka ng saturation is gravitational water. Next is um, permanent wilting point or water at permanent wilting point. So the difference, yung capacity, yung kayang hawakan ng lupa at yung pinaka mababang amount ng water na, na kung saan hindi na mabubuhay ang halaman kapag ganun na lang yung water ng, ng, ng lupa. Ang difference nun, ang difference ng dalawa, okay, is the available water. Ibig sabihin, ito yung area or ito yung water na available for absorption ng halaman. Okay? And then, the unavailable water is the water simula sa water at permanent wilting point pababa no an available na po yung water ang tawag dito ay sometimes called hygroscopic water because the water is held closely on the soil particles and the tension is higher 
to be absorbed or to be pulled back by the roots of the plant. Ayan. Ito yun, no? So, ito yung gravitational water, uh, saturated sa water yung lupa, no? It can, it can drain through soil profile. Capillary water, uh, it is also called, it is available or available water, ayan, available for plant use. That is capillary, capillary water. And hygroscopic water, water that are, uh, have very high Okay, moisture tension that cannot be uh, absorbed by the plant. So I hope that refreshes you with our discussion in the uh, water. Okay, so uh, in demonstration, think of the sponge, okay, and the bowl of water that I have given example to you. So water use in agriculture, uh, it can be rain-fed farming or the natural application of water to the soil through direct rainfall. Then we have, ito yung sinasabi nilang sahod ulan, no? na, na type of farming. Next, irrigation is the artificial application of water to, to the soil through various systems of tubes, pumps, and sprays. Irrigation is usually used in areas where rainfall is irregular or dry times or drought is expected. So yung rain-fed farming, ito yung sa may mga klima na kung saan uh, whole year round meron silang ulan. At yung irrigation naman ginagamit kasi it's artificial, it's a man-made okay, na ginagawa para magkaroon ng water or patubig sa ating mga tanim na crops. Next, we have the type of irrigation, the surface, the localized, the drip, the sprinkler, the center pivot, the lateral move, the subsurface, and the manual irrigation. First, let's discuss the water, the surface irrigation. So water is distributed over and across the land by gravity, no mechanical pump involved. It is far by the most common form of irrigation throughout the world and that's been practiced in many areas. As you can see here in the pictures, ito po yung surface irrigation, parang surface water. The water is in the surface. So this is the faro method and this is the basin method, the two types of surface irrigation. Next, the localized irrigation. So water is distributed under a low pressure through a pipe network and applied to each plant. So the water is directly being put in the plant or in the place where it is needed. So that is localized irrigation. So hindi, hindi na mapapatubigan yung mga areas na kung saan wala namang tanim na plant. Next, the drip irrigation. So, drip irrigation is a type of localized irrigation. So, si drip, localized. Localized siya na type ng irrigation na kung saan yung water are delivered at the near of the roots of the plants. So, in this type of irrigation, evaporation and runoff are minimized. Yung pag mataas na evaporation ng water and then yung runoff, yung... Um, yung excess na water are not being absorbed by the plants na minimize kasi directly nang dinedeliver yung water doon sa plants or sa crops na kung saan siya kailangan. Okay? So, ayan. Another example of irrigation. So, this is the most efficient, has the most efficient use of water. However, uh, it is very, the materials are very expensive and uh, it's laborious to install. So if you will be having a greenhouse, it is uh, beneficial uh, beneficial and efficient to, to have a drip irrigation system so that the water use will be uh, efficiently uh, maximized. No? Hindi, hindi nagsasayang ng tubig unlike sa surface and sa, oh, unlike sa surface irrigation kasi madaming water ang uh, nag na leach or na, natatagas okay no so yun next we have a uh, sprinkler irrigation so water is distributed by overhead high pressure sprinklers or gun from a central location in the field or form sprinklers on moving platform so this is uh, the type of the sprinkler irrigation 
the central pivot. So water is distributed by a system of sprinklers okay, that move on wheeled towers in a circular pattern. The system is common in flat areas of the United States. So I don't know if nakita na kayo nito sa Pilipinas, pero since Philippines is a developing country and uh, is not yet fully mechanized. So this type of irrigations can be seen in uh, developed and uh, developed countries such as the United States, United States, wherein they can have the the luxury to to install this type of uh, irrigation. So it is called central pivot because uh, this you can see it. Uh, on a local basis or in the uh, just ano, ka level mo lang okay? for example, ka level lang ng eye mo, ito nakikita mo but if you see it in the top view so this is the picture of the central pivot okay pa circular yung pattern so for example, nandito yung ano ito yung mahaba na nakita nyo kanina and then yung movement niya pa circular Okay. Kaya ayun, no, parang mga patches na, na, na bilog. Next, the lateral move, they are they are similar with the the, the, the central pivot. However, the sprinkler move a certain distance across the field and need to have the water hose reconnected for the next distance. Um, ayun. So, this is the difference of the lateral and the central pivot. So this is the central pivot. The, the movement is circular. However, in the lateral move, andito yung uh, yung kanina nakikita nyo, tapos ganun lang yung movement. Okay? Pa, Pabalik-balik lang. Kaya lateral lang siya. Okay? Next, the subsurface irrigation. So water is distributed across the land by raising the water table through a system of pump stations, canal, gates, and ditches. This type of irrigation is most effective in areas with high water tables. So, ito naman yung itsura ng subsurface irrigation. Uh, pwede din siyang, as makikita nyo, meron siya ditong, meron siya ditong pipe, network, then may mga holes nasa ilalim, okay, nasa subsoil or nasa subsurface yung irrigation. Uh, maganda to kasi hindi hindi directly na nasa ibabaw yung water no mas mamiminimize mami natin yung um, evaporation of water then the manual irrigation lalo na sa mga nagagarden no yung mga garden ka lang 100 ano 100 square meter tapos mag ano ka pa mag tawag dito magamit ka pa ng drip irrigation o kaya magamit ka ng central pivot lateral move Okay, or mag-surface irrigation ka. So, this is the type of uh, irrigation that is used by, uh, on gardens. Yeah. So, water is distributed across the land through manual labor and watering cans. So, this is very labor intensive. Oo naman, nakakapagod, no? So, yun. Um, let me go back to... Okay, let me go back to our... Ayan. So, this is the lec the handout in the, in the lecture. And so, water, very important. The surface irrigation, the lawa ang uri niya, the faro. This is the faro, the faro irrigation, and then the basin method. Okay, so the basin method has... Uh, 60 to 70 percent efficiency. Then the sprinkler system, yung mga kasama yung central pivot, lateral move, ayan. So sila ay 70 to 80 percent ang efficiency. And then the drip system or the trickle method deliver waters through a network of pipes attached to the drippers and it is the most efficient with 80 to 90 percent efficiency. However, it requires a water infiltration system and a very high capital investment because the installment of that pipes are very very ano, mahal, okay, expensive. So managing soil moisture. 
To manage the soil moisture in crops, we need to select crops that will grow under drier condition. Okay, so on arid regions or arid areas or tropical areas na kung saan during summer wala talagang tubig, nung mahirap ang tubig, ang gagawin natin, we select the crops that grow under drier conditions. Alam nga namang dry na nga yung condition ng lupa tapos magtatalim ka pa ng halaman na kung saan mataas ang requirement sa water. O magpalay ka pa, di ba? O dry, dry, tapos wala kang mapagkukunan ng, ng patubig, magtatan ka pa ng palay. Okay? Is that uh, economically feasible and efficient? Okay. So, select short-term vegetable crops that grow near a source of water, such as water well, the drain from washing areas, or a water tank. Ayun. So, if we want to have a good source of vegetables, okay, sa inyo, sa mga boarding houses ninyo, pwede kayo magtanim ng mga short-lived or mga annual vegetables na kung saan pwedeng itanim doon sa mga areas na kung saan may, ano, may source ng water. Okay? Where feasible and affordable, use drip irrigation systems such as bucket system to maximize water use efficiency. Ayun, kung meron kayong extra na, na pang-install, okay, kahit mga simpleng drip irrigation system lang, so you, you can do so in order to efficiently manage the water. Okay? Managing soil moisture during the dry season. Ayan. Above the soil surface, lagyan natin ng cover. Pwedeng mulch o kaya pwedeng mga organic materials such as straw, rice straw, or mga pinutol na grass. Okay? Is if plastic mulch is used, only silver-coated one should be applied. Okay? Yung mga silver-coated daw, yung mas magandang i-apply kasi mga black mulches, they heat up too much. Mabilis silang uh, uminit and then, in that sense, yung moisture ng lupa ay madali ding mag-evaporate. Provide young plants with a shade to keep it cool para hindi masyado mawala yung moisture sa katawan ng mga young plants and mga transplanted plants. Kailangan lagyan natin sila ng shade. No? Ang usually na ginag ginagamit for shading is the... Oh. Oh, oh, shout out sa B sa 2B na maiingay habang nagre-record ako. Okay, so yung shade ng paggamit ng saging, ayan, so it can be used. So remove weeds because they compete with plants moisture, ayan. Yung mga weeds, uh, <laughs> Mr. Segi, kung may video lang ako, bibidyohan kita, eh. okay. Remove weeds because they compete with plants moisture, and below the soil surface, incorporate compost and organic material in the soil. For during the wet season, okay, panahon ng tag-ulan, iangat natin yung mga plants na, ay yung mga plants, iangat natin yung beds o yung um, paasad natin yung ating mga pagtataniman, okay, para ma-improve yung aeration at hindi mababad sa tubig. Kasi kung malalim, eh, babahain yan, no? Plants that like to grow in wet areas such as taro and kangkong. Ayun, dito tayo magtanim kung saan madaming tubig ng mga crops na kung saan gusto din nila ng maraming tubig. Use coconut fronts and other materials to protect young plants and those with tender leaves from heavy rain. And grow vine plants up on a trellis. Yung mga sa tag-ulan, mas maganda kung yung itatanim natin, kalabasa, or mga viney crops ay nakataas or nakatrellis. Kasi kung sa baba, o oh, di maulan, mag-water lag. Okay? So, let me go back to my PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation. Ayan. So, let's have... Okay, let's have O oh, sige. Um hindi ko dito sa picture na to, hindi ko alam pero um sige. Okay. 
Ayan, let's have uh, time for our brain exercise. Yan, exercise natin yung mga brain na yan para gumana ang mga brain cells at mailabas ang dapat ilabas. Okay? So, for the first question, give at least three types of irrigation system. So, let me first pull back my my 30. So, I, I will just be giving you 30 seconds. 30 second timer. Where's my timer? 30 second. Okay, so your timer. So again, the question is, give at least three types of irrigation system. So timer starts now. Okay, so the correct answer includes surface irrigation, localized irrigation, drip, sprinkler, central fibot, lateral move, subsurface. So if you have uh, three okay, correct answers, then please check your papers. Next, give the two types of surface irrigation. Again, give the two types of surface irrigation. Timer starts now. Okay, correct answer is the basin method and then the farrow method. Next question, give the chemical symbol for water. Again, give the chemical symbol for water. Timer starts now. Correct answer, H2O, okay? Next, give three sources. Give the three sources of agricultural water. Again, give the three sources of agricultural water. Timer starts now. Correct answer is surface water, ground water, and drain water. Okay. Next, in your own words, explain why water is important to be conserved. Write your answer in the comment section of this channel in our Facebook group. The first one will be commenting, meaning um, he or she have watched this video will win. 50,000 pesos, char, 50 pesos load. Again, the first one to write the answer for this question in the comment section of our Facebook group will receive 50 pesos load or GCash, dependent on you. Okay, So that's all for our discussion this morning. I hope you learned something today and thank you for listening.